Good morning and welcome once again to another moment in the Word. We're in Luke chapter 1 and we're looking at verses 30 to 33. This is where the angel says to Mary, and the angel is Gabriel. The and is connecting with what went before, because what she had before is the announcement from Gabriel that she has been found uh, uh, favored by the Lord, in other words, with grace, and she is blessed among women. Now, when you find the word grace, grace is always given by God. It's unfa undeserved, unmerited, unearned. It is simply a gift from God. But God never gives us grace just for the sake of grace. We are saved not by works, but by grace unto good works. When you find the word blessing throughout the Old Testament, the word blessing is always with the context and the anticipation of, mess, of a uh, responsibility being carried out. God gives you something for a purpose. And so when she sees that, she immediately responds with, she's troubled, and not only is she troubled, but she considers. The word troubled means immediately she is affected by it, and then she considers these things. She tosses them back and forth. That's the context of verse 30. And the angel said unto her, fear not. The word fear not is in the present tense. It means stop fearing. It is the same word that is used in verse 13 of this chapter when Gabriel, the same angel, is speaking to Zacharias. Zacharias is the priest. He is going to be the father of John the Baptist. He is standing at the altar of incense. And on the right hand, Gabriel appears and immediately he is fearing. It is a natural, normal response. It doesn't matter if you're 70 years old like Zacharias or if you're a young teenager like Mary. The normal response to the things of God is to fear. Grace hath taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. If this morning you are fearing as a result of the things that you're seeing, perhaps that you're seeing physically, perhaps politically, perhaps spiritually in the world, fear not. Now, Gabriel has given to Mary a great reason not to fear, for you'll see, fear not, Mary, thou hast found favor with God. That word for is the reason. For you have found favor. Now, what does that mean? Notice she found it. She didn't earn it. It's always discovered. You, if you have, fear, have grace, then that is something that God has given to you. Notice that Mary, that he, she is called by name. Just as Zacharias was called by name, fear not, Zacharias, fear not, Mary, and God knows your name, and he's calling you by name, and yet you're important to the Lord, and thereby, Mary, you have found favor with God. Now, that's the first thing that he says, but then he goes on and he says, behold. Now, the word behold is that word that you're to focus on, you're to pay attention to. It is something that you see with your eyes and look upon, but that you're to give complete attention to. Behold, and then he says three things that she is to behold. First of all, you will conceive in your womb. To conceive in her womb, she's immediately, I am sure, saying, I was disturbed by knowing that God has blessed me and given me grace. Now, I don't know a man. She's going to address that later on in verse 34. But immediately, the angel is telling her, Fear not, you are going to have a child. Now, it seems like when things happen in your life that God is saying to you, be not anxious, be calm, be still and know that I am God. And then he tells you something that he's going to do in your life, and you may have more anxiety, but I want you to see something that's so important here. First of all, you're going to be 
conceiving in your womb and bring forth a son. Now, this is really incredible. This is the second thing she's to behold, that she's going to bring forth a son. Immediately, we can put the pieces together now. They were never put together before. And that is Genesis 3, 15, that, he, that out of the woman's seed, the woman's seed would bruise the head of, of the serpent. Secondly, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, the Lord will give you a sign. Jesus is the sign. A virgin shall conceive. In Isaiah chapter 9, in verse 6, and this is unto us, a child is born, a son is given. These verses didn't mean anything at the time in which they were given. They weren't put together. Now they're coming together in Gabriel's message to Mary. These prophecies that may not make much sense at the time in which they are given always make sense in the fulfillment. The same thing is happening in the world today. Most of prophecy has yet to be fulfilled. 333 prophecies were fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. But his second coming, there are many, many more. I want you to know it may not make sense now, but it will make sense when the event occurs. Next, that she is to call his name Jesus. The word Jesus is actually a word, but it's also a name. It is the name Joshua or Yeshua. And the name Yeshua is actually a combination of two words. The first is the Yahed Vahed, and that is the name, the personal name of God. I am that I am. The second word is salvation. You put the two together, it means Jehovah saves. Every time somebody uses the name Yeshua, Jesus, Jesus, that is referring to God's salvation. It's interesting that the Christians and Jews very frequently would name their children Jesus until one century after Jesus came. Now, most Christians today, most English-speaking people today, do not call their children, their sons, Jesus. That is a name that is very distinguished. We need a Savior. And now she is told five things that Jesus will do. First of all, that he will be great. Now this is kind of strange, isn't it? That he is already great. To be great is the word mega. It means that it is beyond what everything else is that we know. It's a comparative term. It is great compared to that which is lesser. Jesus is already God. He is already great. But he will be great in what he is accomplishing. And as a result, we will say unto him is given glory and honor and blessing and power and all of the things that you find that we will be saying with the 10,000 times 10,000. He is also going to be called the son of the highest. That phrase highest is El Elyon. It is the one who is above all. He is the greatest of all kings. We find that expression used in the book of Daniel because Daniel is writing of various kingdoms, that Jesus is the greatest of all the kings and kingdoms and potentates that have ever been. And then thirdly, he, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David. Both Mary and Joseph... Her espoused husband are of the lineage of David. But the promise was given to David that your throne would be eternal. The fact of the matter is, after David died, his kingdom in less than four centuries was totally destroyed. And so consequently, we ask, what is it now, this promise that was given to David? It will be fulfilled in the one who Mary will bear. And the next promise is verse 33, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. Jacob is the name 
of Israel before he had the encounter at the river Jabbok and God gave him a blessing and you may remember he limped but he changed his name he changed his character God is saying that Jacob that Israel in its natural state the bones will come together and the spirit of God will come into the nation of Israel and someday they will recognize and say blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord and then finally his kingdom, there will be no end. Boy, wouldn't that be wonderful to know that we've got a righteous king, that we have one who is ruling over the world and there is peace in the world and it will never end. I want you to know that word end is teleos. It is the same word that is that Jesus used from the cross to tell us to hide. When he cried out in, in a jubilant, victorious shout it is finished there is no finish there is no end there is never a termination of his kingdom isn't that wonderful his name is great he is the son of the highest he is the son of god he will reign over the throne of david over the house of israel and all the nations will be blessed because of it and his kingdom has no end his kingdom has already begun if you know the lord jesus his kingdom is within you do you know him as savior and lord in this world we need the kingdom of god someday it will be i pray you're a citizen of the kingdom of god now and will experience it in the future let's pray father thank you so much for your word thank you for the promise and the comfort and the peace that it brings in jesus name amen, amen.